Hey everyone, today I'm going to try and talk about the use of red ochre and other natural pigments by Neanderthals. First, we're going to go over some examples of Mousterian artifacts that display the use of red ochre, and then I'm going to try to give you some of my theories of what else Neanderthals might have been using natural pigments for. But first, I will show you an example of red ochre paint being made. The first example will be with just water, and then I will show you it with rendered bear grease or fat. This first artifact I will show you can be interpreted as jewelry. It is a scallop shell found in a rock shelter in southeastern Spain that was occupied 100,000 to 35,000 years ago. The artifact is thought to be 40,000 years old. Here you can see my attempt at replicating said artifact. The original featured two drilled holes that were later discovered to have been polished down by some type of cordage. This lent some scientists to conclude the shell was worn as a pendant. These next artifacts we are going to look at comes from Romania in the form of eight paint pots. These preparation containers found in the Mousterian layer dated more than 50,000 years. In this cave, Ciara Cave in Borostini, Romania. I apologize if I butchered the pronunciation. These paint pots are the first direct material evidence of Neanderthals preparing red ochre for painting various surfaces. If you would like to read more of these artifacts listed, I will post all my sources down in the description. I highly encourage you to check them out, because there is no way I can possibly cover all the archaeological information about them. There is also evidence that dates to about 250,000 years ago at this early Neanderthal site in the Netherlands. In the 1980s, archaeologists excavated small concretions of the reddish mineral. According to a 2012 study in the journal PNAS, the Neanderthals may have powdered the ochre, mixed it with water, fat, or other liquid, so that they could paint their skin, clothing, or anything else they really desired. Again, I'll have all my sources in the description below. Now I wanted to talk about some of my theories as to what Neanderthals could, or would, use natural pigments for. These are some of my thoughts and the thoughts of academics. Use number one is as simple as it gets, bug repellent or a form of camouflage. Like most people, I'm sure the Neanderthals wouldn't have appreciated getting bitten by mosquitoes on a constant level. This wouldn't have been a problem during the colder periods, as we know mosquitoes go in. But when the seasons got warmer, the mosquitoes would have been a nightmare. Just look at modern day Alaska and Siberia. Going outside in the summer, there are millions if not billions of mosquitoes. So I'm sure the Neanderthals could have used ochre as a sort of barrier between their skin and the bugs. Next use is camouflage. We know from various studies and finds that Neanderthals would have had to rush their prey. Now it is possible they could have used traps, and I'm a firm believer that they would have used traps to spear their prey and to get up close to them. 
So Neanderthals could have used the red ochre to cover up their scent and to blend in with their environment for obvious reasons. There have been recent studies that suggest that some groups of Neanderthals would have thrown their spears, but would have still had to get very close to the target prey. Findings from the Chantal Peronian period, the last techno-complex of Neanderthals, in the form of pendants, awls, bones, spearheads, have been stained with the red ochre pigment. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this topic, but I will briefly go over it with you. It is possible that these artifacts could have been stained for a ritual reason. And I know that's really corny, because that's what every scientist says. Or a more plausible reason is that they were trying to preserve the quality of the bone for a longer period of time. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit more about why the bone tools may have been stained. Um, honestly, scientists really don't know, but some of my uneducated opinions could be that they were using the red ochre as sort of a buffering paste. So they would have ground it up and then thrown it on the sandstone or whatever they were using to uh, grind down the bones. Or the antlers, I should say. Um, again, it could be ritual reason. You never know. People are weird. I'm sure the Neanderthals were too. Um, even though they do live on in us, which makes them weirdos. Uh, what else? They could have... Uh, when they were soaking it in the water, because that's the fastest way to grind down a caribou antler is to soak it for a very long time. They could have been mixing the water with red ochre to kind of pickle it, if you will. Um, but yeah, we really don't know. It could be a ritual reason. could be that they just like red tools. Because um, in my own experiments, our caribou antler takes on color very well after you grind down the uh, brown layers. But... Let's continue on with the video. I highly recommend you do your own research for this topic because it is very interesting. And that's really going to be it for the this Red Ochre video. Uh, it took me about a month to make because I started working at a new job. And I work night shifts, so it's hard to record. But um, I hope you learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe. I will also have links to my group page and Instagram. One last thing before I let you all go. I now have a Parlor account and a Mines account. So if you guys could go and check that out, that would be mint. Thank you all. This has been Neanderthal Joe.